All right. <laughs> well, that's good for me, though. Everybody good on the super scary teeth? Yeah, yes. Yes. Sharp Let's get away from those then. Okay. Venom delivery. <laughs> Uh, so vipers fangs fold on the roof of the mouth when the mouth is closed. Um, then what is an elipid? Do you know? Okay. So they have the upright fangs and then colubrids have upright rear fangs. Um, non-venomous snakes are the ones that we like. The oh. agliferous oh, so have an, no fangs. An elephant would be like a cobra type snake. Okay. What about a colubrid? A uh, what? A uh, colubrid. Upright rear fang. Col oh, so they're rear, rear fang venomous? So like... um. Like a coral snake. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't so run into like any of those. So it's not up front where you'd get the venom, it's back in the back. So as long as they only bit you a little bit, you'd be okay? Yeah. Yeah, it'd probably just okay. be very painful, but you wouldn't die. Oh, um, Once so again, like... I'm um, not getting close I think, enough to get bit. I think sandbows, if I remember correctly, they're rear fanged um, venomous, but okay. you're still allowed to have them hmm. without a license. Yeah, that's stupid. Okay. Well, I don't think they're deadly, though. Oh, okay. All right. But they're still considered. Okay. Venomous. All right, I gotcha. So, venom-delivering teeth are hollow. They have an opening near the end where the venom is expelled. Um, the venom is procurement of food, and use for defense is secondary. I don't want to make them think that I am either. So, the fang receives venom through a duct from the venom gland at its base. Contractions of muscles around the venom gland force the venom out through the fang, and the amount of venom released can be controlled. Amphibians, most amphibians have teeth. Did not know that either. Sicilians and salamanders both have maxillary and mandibular teeth. Aneron have maxillary detention, dentition, and frogs, some species have cutting plates on the rostral mandibles, which is called the odontoid process. So in a reptile, the esophagus is thin and distensible, unique morphology to reflect the type of prey. In amphibians, the esophagus is short and wide. The stomach in reptiles is variable in size and shape. Snakes, we all know, is highly distensible. <laughs> We've all seen like the pictures of the snake after it eats a big meal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then the crocodilians have thick muscle compared to avian gizzard. Um, amphibians, the anorans are capable of prolapsing the stomach through the mouth to clean it off. Ew. <laughs> So an amphibian intestinal tract is going to be short and simple, in distinct regions. The liver may contain melanomacrophages involved in immune function. Reptile intestinal tracts are going to vary according to the diet. So the herbivores are going to have longer tracts than carnivores or omnivores. Why would that be? Because they have to break down the plants. Uh, because it has a harder, um, it's harder to digest. The cellulose is harder yeah. to digest, yep. Snakes have relatively straight intestinal tracts, apparently. Reptilian intestinal tracts, the colon is large and complex for the herbivores. The secae is site for hindgut fermentation in the herbivore lizards and chelions. Chel Chelonians, and the liver is usually large and bilobed. Is that a frog? The picture? Yeah. Yeah. I was saying, when I was... No, that's a lizard. It's a lizard. Oh. It's a tail. Oh, yeah, you're right. I was just saying, when I went to, uh, when I was going to Kent, when I took one of the lab classes there, uh, we dissected a frog, or did a frog. And... We had to do that in high school. See, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we did that. What did we do? 
Yeah, no, 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 no. You know what? I, we I, had to do the pig next. We started with the frog, then we did the fetal pig. You know what? No, I'm wrong. We actually did the frog in high school. We did a rat at Kent. I did a cat in high school. Oh. Barbarians? Yeah. You guys had that many dead cats hanging around? Yeah, really. It, it, you knew it was cat week. Cat week? <laughs> yeah. It, every, every year we have a dissection of for cats, so, um, for, uh, anatomy and physiology, and you, Monsters. you, you can smell the formaldehyde, and just walking down the hall, it's like, oh, it's cat week. Oh, that makes me sad in my heart. Yeah. yeah. Where did you go to high school? Um, Lake Center Cat Christian Cat killing school? high school. Cat killing <laughs> high school. Nice. Okay. So, the cloaca. Common outflow tract for GI and urogenital tracts for all reptiles and amphibians. It has three chambers, the coprudium, the urodium, and the proctodium. Mm. Kidneys. Snake kidneys are lobulated. Some species have a urinary bladder. Urine enters, through, enters the bladder through the urodium. Other species have no urinary bladder, so the ureters empty into the dorsolateral aspects of the urethrum. Reptile kidneys, they have no distinct renal pelvis. Distal collecting tubules join in collecting ducts that merge to form the ureter. No loop of Henle, so the water is absorbed from urine through the walls of the urinary bladder, rectum, or cloaca, and they are able to conserve water efficiently Uric acid is secreted rather than filtered. Urine production can be decreased during times of dehydration, which is the renal portal system. Amphibian kidneys are more primitive than, primitive than reptilian kidneys. They're usually lobulated. They filter blood and cholemic fluid via the nephrosomes. They cannot concentrate urine. They excrete waste, ammonia, urea, or uric acid. All amphibians have urinary bladders and colloquial anatomy similar to reptiles. So in the reptiles, all of the males have internal testes. The ductus difference lead from the testes to the urodum. Most also have sexual portion of kidney tubules Secretions contribute to the seminal fluid and all possess copulatory organs for internal fertilization. So they have a phallus of erectile tissue and paired hemipens everted from the tail base through the vent. So does that make sense? Do you guys kind of understand how that happens? No? Okay, so they don't have a penis per se, but they have the erectile tissue. Okay. So it's gonna come out of the vent and it's gonna look more like this. So is it like in their body the whole time and it's not? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. in their body. Okay. And so it only comes out for copulation. Or you gotcha. can push it out yeah. to sex them. Yeah. Okay. Makes a little more sense. One of my favorite reptile stories ever was we had this lady, she was the nicest lady ever, and she called one night at like midnight, and she's like, I don't know what to do. I cannot stop my lizard from masturbating. Uh -huh. And I'm like, what? And she's like, I cannot stop my, master my lizard from masturbating. <laughs> my masturbating <I'm> like, lizard. <laughs> Okay, and she's like, I'm really worried. Like, he's gonna rub himself raw. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> if you're really worried, bring him in. We'll take a look at him. Turned out that he was a she, oh. and she was trying to lay eggs. Oh. <laughs> yeah. She didn't know the whole time that she. <laughs> no idea. Sometimes reptiles so are hard to sex. Female reptiles look like they're masturbating when they're in Apparently, yeah. I don't know if she was like, if she was in dystocia and she was having issues, like actually pushing the egg out, 
So she was trying to help herself or what was going on yeah, there. But what, yeah. What type so, of reptile so to, was it? It was something we don't see very often. And I don't remember what it was. So, I mean, did she end up giving birth right there then? And when she brought her in? Or do you know what happened? Um, we made her comfortable and then she went a couple hours later over to the exotic vet. So after that, I don't know. You don't know what happened to her? No. Let's just believe they don't survive. I always like to believe that. So the females have paired ovaries, paired oviducts that lead to the cloaca and end in the ure urodium. Albumin and shell added to the ova in the oviduct prior to egg laying, or fetuses are retained in the uterine portion of the oviduct. So, vitellogenesis is the development and maturation of the follicles in the ovary. Um, vito Vidalogenin and calcium are added to the yolk within the follicle. The follicles mature. There's a surge of the LH hormone, which causes ovulation. That should sound familiar. The ova are then released from the follicle. It's taken up into the oviduct and albumin, shell membranes, and the shell are laid down and then the egg is actually laid. Many reptiles dig nests to lay eggs. It is very important if you have a female reptile that she have the proper substrate in her enclosure because if they cannot build the nest that they want to build, they will go into dystocia. So um, after they lay the eggs or have the babies a lot of times they show um very little interest afterwards huh. it's because sometimes if they show interest in everything other ones will come and actually will eat their the babies hmm. the the eggs and everything so if you have a breeding pair of a male and a female in there if the female shows any interest in the eggs and the male finds where the eggs are they will eat them just like if you keep the babies in with the parents, the more than likely the male will eat them, but the mom can actually eat them too. So you want to take the babies away from the parents. Well, even, hmm. I know, like with crocodiles at least, like they kind of still show, like. I mean, I'm have, going. Like, like you see videos of like their babies kind of hanging on or on well, top of that. Them. More with males. Huh? You don't want them with males. Oh, yeah. But, and it says few reptiles, it doesn't say no reptiles. So crocodiles could be the exception. Yeah, I'm going off of crested geckos because I breed them. Interesting. <clears throat> well, I know like the sea turtles, she lays the eggs and then she disappears. So that's yeah. why they have to be protected so that when they hatch, then you have to lead them to the ocean. Huh. You didn't know that? I. Well, it's Not more. Really. Look it up. It's really cool. The more you have to lead them to the ocean now because you have so many uh, houses on the beach mm -hmm. because they're drawn to the light. Right. So if there was no houses on the beach, you wouldn't have to do that because they would naturally go to the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, it made me really, really mad because we have gone to Myrtle Beach the last couple of summers. I love Beach. And there is a rule when you go on the beach at night, you cannot have a flashlight. Mm hmm. Because the turtles, during turtle season, it's only dur during turtle season, but the turtles will see the light and go towards it, and you won't see the turtles until it's too late and they're already like in, going in the wrong direction. Hey, so it's a good rule, right? <laughs> Every night I saw people out there with flashlights. Every night. And I would get so mad. Mm -hmm. My husband stopped letting me walk on the beach at night because I was kind of rude to some people. <laughs> <laughs> so the egg incubation, they need the appropriate environment for successfully hatching the eggs, which means it has to be the proper temperature, humidity, and gas composition. And the time and temperature is gonna vary with species. They may need a diapause, um, do, they do not need rotation because that can actually destroy the embryo. 
So sex determination. The genotypes, the female are um, ZW, males are ZZ. Um, apparently it is also determined by the temperature at which the eggs are incubated, which I find yeah. fascinating. Huh. Higher temperatures produce males in crocodilians and lizards. Higher temperatures produce females in the tonolians and temperature range in the nest allows for production of a mixed clutch of hatchlings. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, so if you want more females, all you have to do is change their temperature. That is so cool. Um, Imagine if we could do that. Like, I'm going to put on an extra sweater. I think I want a girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, secondary sexual characteristics. In snakes, the tail may be longer and thicker in the males. In the tel telonians, males often have concave castron and a more distal vent. The less reliable differences would be eye color, the uh, carapace shape, length of claws on the forelimbs. Um, lizards, some of the males may have horns on the face and females have none. Males may be larger with more pronounced dewlaps and crests. And in the crocodilians, the males are clearly larger than females. However, if you're like those poor people in Florida that were just driving down the street and the crocodile came up and started walking up towards them, you don't really have anything to compare it to, so you don't know what it is. You should still run though. Yes. That thing was huge. Did you guys see that? No. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh my God, it was just like this random busy road in Florida. And like this alligator just started walking down the road. <laughs> it was huge. It was like as long as a car and was just like ambling down the road. Nobody seemed concerned. <laughs> It was like it was no big deal. It's Florida. Of course they don't seem concerned. They stopped to video it. Mm -hmm. oh it went viral. Just exploring, man. Just saying new things. Yeah. <laughs> it happened right before they had that really cold snap when the, um, was it the geckos that were falling out of the, the trees? Iguanas. The iguanas were falling out of the trees. Oh, God. They'd get too cold. Um, they, they, and they couldn't hold on anymore and they'd fall out. And Aww. that's when the illegal trappers get them and mm -hmm. they grab them all and be like, see you guys. And then if you get caught, you get in real big trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, my dad called me one morning. He's like, so the paper says I'm not supposed to pick up an iguana on the ground. It's <laughs> like, mm hmm. He's like, but why? Well, because it's real cold. He's like, I'll warm it up. Oh, you have one very mad iguana on your hands. It's yeah, a wild leave iguana. Leave the iguanas alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, sexual dimorphism in the amphibians is present in many of them. Differences that can be seen in males of various species are enlarged toe pads. Larger tympanic membranes, prominent cloacal glands, rough nuptial pads on the limbs, and calling when conditions are appropriate. So, uh, amphibians do have paired gonads in the dorso caudal colemic cavity, bitters organs, and male toads. Um, most of the Sicilians are viviparous, and most anurans and salamanders are oviparous. So the philodium portion of the cloaca in the Sicilians is inverted to deposit semen into the female's cloaca. Sounds very romantic. Spermatophores are packets of sperm that are deposited onto the substrate by the male salamanders and then picked up by the female cloaca. So they don't actually even have to come in contact with the males. Huh. Good for that. Aplexes, male frogs and toads fertilize eggs as they're laid while grasping the female. So amphibian eggs are usually deposited in or near water. The larvae are water dependent. 
So tadpoles are completely aquatic before metamorphosis. Some species bypass the larval stage and hatch in adult form. Some parental care of eggs and or young in the anurans and salamanders. So the reptiles have a single thyroid gland except for the lizards. The size varies according to season and metabolic state. And it is involved in the shedding and the growth. The parathyroid glands and ultimobranchial bodies are hormones involved in calcium and phosphorus homeostasis. Adrenal glands are found in ligaments that suspend the gonads. They produce epinephrine, norepinephrine, aldosterone, and cortisone. And there's no distinct separation of the cortex and the medulla. The form and function of the endocrine glands in amphibians is comparable to those of reptiles. The nervous system. So central nervous system consists of brain and spinal cord. There's three major divisions of the brain. You have the forebrain that has the olfactory lobes, cerebral hemispheres, and the diencephalon. The midbrain has the optic lobes, cerebral peduncles, nerve fibers connecting forebrain and hindbrain, and then the hindbrain is the cerebellum and the medulla oblongata. There's no gyri or solsti present. Um, they have two meninges. They have the pia arachnoid layer and the dura matter. They still have 12 cranial nerves. Who else has 12 cranial nerves? Um, and they have control of the body movement through spinal segmental reflexes and locomotor centers. So it's not gonna be that portion of the nervous system is not gonna be like the mammals. Amphibian nervous systems are more primitive than that of the reptiles. The brain developed for basic functions like sight, smell, and movement. They only have 10 cranial nerves. The spinal cord does extend all the way to the tip of the amphibians and the Sicilians, and it ends in the lumbar region in frogs and toads. And again, body movement is dependent on the spinal segmental reflexes. So the skulls can be really, really different. Um, you have the anapsid and the diapsid. So lizards and snakes have um, the mandibular symphysis connected by ligaments. So the jaws can move independently of each other. Quadrate bones allow the mouth to open wide so they can get their prey and they have movable bones in the maxillae and in the palate. I have never noticed that lizards can move their top and bottom jaw independently. Like I really want to go watch a lizard now and just watch it happen. Because <laughs> I think that's really cool. It's got to look really cool. I've never noticed it before. It does. It is cool. Is it? Yeah. I'm going to have to look it up on YouTube. So the anorans are typically broad and fenestrated, fewer bones than the amphibians, the palate is poorly developed, and dentition is reduced. The Sicilians are compact, well ossified skulls, and the dentition is well developed. So the axial skeleton, the spine, is extremely flexible in the reptiles. They have the presacral, the sacral, and the caudal regions of their vertebrae. And they have a single occipital condyle forming an articulation between the skull and the spine. The ribs are well developed and the spine and the ribs are fused to the bony shell in the telomeans. So the tail is actually a defensive mechanism for lizards, geckos, and salamanders. They have the ability to drop their tail when they're being pursued by a predator. 
They have fracture planes along which they break off and the discarded tail can wiggle and they'll start to like distract the prey so that the gecko can get away. I've seen this happen with my dad's dog in Florida because there's always geckos all over the place. <laughs> and they'll drop their tail and make it wiggle so that yeah, the dog goes after Some it. of them don't grow back. Really? Yeah, crested geckos' tails don't grow back. So they're called frog butts oh. when they drop their tail. So they're acting more valuable when they have their tail because when they drop their tail, they don't grow back. Hmm. Okay. That's good to know. So, um, the lost tail usually apparently regenerates as a stiff cartilagin cartilaginous rod in some species. Oh, other species do not regrow tails. Look at you. And some species will drop tails due to fear. So, the vertebrae are going to be different in all the different species. So, the Sicilians have no distinction between the regions of the vertebrae. The ribs are well developed, but there's no sternum. Salamanders, the sternum is small and it's just a cartilaginous plate. Um, and they also have the sacral vertebrae. The anurans have a well developed ossified sternum. The vertebrae are fused, and the uh, urostyle is the last caudal vertebrae. The appendicular skeleton of reptiles, the skeletal structures are comparable to mam mammals. Sorry, Spurs are vestigial limbs in some species of snakes. The pectoral limb articulates with the pectoral girdle, and it's the scapula and the carotid bone. Muscular attachments to the body, five digits on both front and rear feet, and then the pelvic limb is usually longer than the pectoral limb, which if you've watched them run, you can kind of see that. Kind of cool. They're real cute when they run. So the pectoral limb articulates with the pectoral girdle, skeletal structures similar to that of the reptiles with the exception of the radio ulna in anurans. Four toes on the anurans and the salamanders. The pelvic limb articulates with the pelvic girdle, the ilium ischium pubis. The skeletal structure is similar, similar to that of reptiles, <coughs> except for the elongated metatarsal bones in the anurans. And five toes are typically present. Muscular system varies according to species. So, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I don't have Corona, stop it. <laughs> Muscles are incapable of sustained aerobic metabolism, which means what? Oh, the, uh, he has a oxygen. Mm-hmm. So they switch over to the anaerobic metabolism to prolong, for prolonged physical exertions. It's less efficient and it does result in a rapid buildup of lactate. The lactate decreases the pH of the blood in the tissues and the lactate is metabolized very slowly. Snake locomotion. <laughs> they have well-developed <laughs> paxial muscles and segmental muscles and the muscles attached to ventral scutes at the ends of the ribs. Know it all. Know it all. What do you call an alligator in a vest? An investigator. Uh, 